What is going on, gum fighters? Welcome to Gum Fighter Life, the podcast where we talk about gum fighting with God at the center and real world first hand experience. What are we going to talk about today? Well, obviously, guns. Specific kind of guns. Guns and the cartridge of 5.7. The cartridge itself, the guns chambered for it, and the guns I'd like to see chambered for it. Anyway, the 5.7 is a unique cartridge. That's what we're going to be talking about today. That said, if you like Gunfighter Life, if you want to contribute, you're not ready to be a patron yet, make sure you're subscribed. Hit some stars if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes. And in an easy way, it's just that little icon that looks like a square with an arrow. Share it with somebody else that you know that likes guns, unless you're the only one that you know that likes guns. Maybe share an episode or two that you think your friend would like on guns. Let's help this podcast grow. With that, I'm going to plug in the bio. If you want to skip it, skip 3 minutes and 45 seconds ahead. We'll talk about the 5-7. Who am I? A question we should all ask ourselves. I am, first and foremost, a servant of God made in his very own image. A follower of Jesus Christ. A simple man called by God to the Great Commission to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Next, a little bit about my background and what God has allowed me to do and blessed me to do in life. Grew up what most would consider very poor in the backwoods of the southeastern and mid-Atlantic United States. Hunting and fishing. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. So a decorated Marine Corps combat veteran. Infantry assaultman. After the combat tours, I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also a veteran of law enforcement, I served... With LAPD, I was a sworn peace officer, a cop for LAPD. I worked regular patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. One of those more specialized assignments was warrant service, fugitive recovery. Also had some other law enforcement roles. I am an FBI certified firearms instructor and been certified by another three-letter government agency and a lot of firearms and training things. I've also been a private contractor, worked in the private sector, pertaining to tactics and gunfighting and protecting America from enemies foreign and domestic. I served as the commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters in a large metropolitan area. That was our primary mission, to stop active shooters, which sadly are a thing in America today. I've also been blessed to do quite a bit of competition shooting. Started my first formal competitions even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. I had one more shooting competitions than I can remember. I have competed in all manner of disciplines in shooting, I've been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion, West Coast regional champion. Like I said, been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I mentioned hunting. I've hunted to put meat on the table starting when I was a child. I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide, hunting and slaying all manner of beast. And I don't apologize for that. Humbled to be the host of three podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, Alpha Male Podcast, and Gumfighter Life. Obviously, as things not mentioned, I've been blessed to do many other things. But, again, first and foremost, I'm a servant. A servant of God, a believer and follower of the Bible, the Word, Jesus Christ. 
and I don't apologize for that. With that, let's transition into today's topic. So let's talk about the topic, the 5-7. Before we talk about what it is, let's talk about what it is not. Because a lot of times in the gun world, we compare something to something else. And usually that's a good thing to do. You know, what's a SIG 320? It's basically a Glock 17 with better ergonomics that you can pull the chassis out of. It's basically what it is, right? What's a Smith & Wesson M&P? It's basically a Glock 17 with 1911 ergonomics made in America, right? That's basically what it is. You know, what's a 40 Smith & Wesson? It's a 10 millimeter cut down into a 9 millimeter size frame. Basically what it is, right? But what, what is a 5.7? It is not, like most people compare it to, it is not a 9 millimeter. It's not a handgun round, a traditional handgun round. Sure, you can put it in a handgun, but it's not a handgun round. And it's not really fair to compare it to a 9 millimeter, although it often gets compared to that. It looks like a little baby 223, right? If you look at it, it looks very similar to a 5.56 NATO round or a 223. But it is not that. That's an intermediate rifle round. The 5.7 is not an intermediate rifle round. But it's not that. People compare it to a 22 Magnum because it's a 22 high velocity round. But it's not a rimfire, you know, varmint cartridge. It's not that. It's its own thing. So what is it? What is this 5.7 thing in and of itself? It is a unique thing. It is not a 9mm it is not a 223. It is not a pistol round. It is not an intermediate rifle round. It is a PDW round, a personal defense weapon round. That's what it was designed for. Designed for the P90, PS90. It was designed from the ground up to be a different thing. It was originally designed for that niche, that personal defense weapon niche. It was not designed to replace the main battle rifle on a battlefield. It's not what it was designed for. It was not designed to be a super cool Instagram pistol round. It was not designed for that. right? It was designed for personal defense weapons and small, handy carbines. Initially, you know, the small, handy bullpup carbine. A short, handy weapon for vehicle convoys, for all manner of other military jobs where their main job is not to carry a battle rifle or an assault rifle or whatever you want to call it, right? That's what it is. It was not designed to be intermediate rifle cartridge. It was not designed to be a pistol cartridge, although it has been chambered in both. Although it has been chambered in those things, in handguns and in carbines, or more traditional rifles, it's not what it was designed for. That's not what it is. It's its own thing. So let's look at some ballistics on the 5.7. Now remember how I said it's not a 223. Now most people think of 223 as throwing a 55 on the light side or the 62 grain on the heavier side, maybe even 77 grain projectile. Now for this, you're talking a 23 grain to 31 grain is the common loadings that I'm seeing. So 23 grains. It's less than half a 55, which is a super light round for the 223 or 556. So you're talking a 23 grain bullet at 2800. So although the velocity is similar, the projectile is certainly not similar. If you're talking about 27 grains, which I guess would be like a medium loading for this, you're talking about 2550. And you're talking about 27 grains. Again, compare that to a 55 or a 62 or a 77 grain. So you can't really compare it to the 9mm because those velocities, a 9mm, I know there's different loadings, there's 147s and 115s, but let's for the argument's sake for good round numbers, you're right around 1,000 feet a second. Just under for subsonic, a little bit over for supersonic, you get crazy plus P stuff, you're going a little bit faster, but let's say 1,000 feet a second for argument's sake. This is going 28, 2,500 feet a second, way more than double the speed of a nine millimeter way more than most nine millimeters but with way less mass you're talking 115 grain 147 grain bullet versus a 20 something grain bullet so 
again, it can't really be compared to anything. So let's look at it on its face. Let's forget about the nine millimeter. Let's forget about the 223. What is this thing in and of itself? It is a bottleneck round that shoots a very light projectile, even for 22 standards, a very light projectile, very high velocities for 22 caliber standards. Even your 22 long rifle is generally going to be throwing a 36 to a 40 grain projectile in a 22 long rifle. Granted, nowhere near as fast. That's why I said, really not comparable to much. Could compare it maybe ballistically numbers wise to a 22 Hornet or a 22 Magnum, but it's really not. It's not a rimmed, again, rimfire cartridge. It's not that. The projectiles are going to be different weights, are going to be different shapes for sure, different ballistic coefficients. It really is its own thing. So you're talking about, let's pull up those numbers again. You're talking about 20 something grain bullet giving you somewhere around 400 foot pounds of energy. And I'm not big on the foot pounds of energy for stopping power. It may or may not correlate, but 400 pounds of stopping power. And again, I do believe these are carbine numbers, not pistol numbers, but that's nothing to sneeze at. That's not nothing, right? That's not a 22 long rifle. So again, it's its own thing. So we have to look at it independently and say, is this something I'm interested in? Does it fit what I want? Does it fit what I'm trying to do? Now, obviously I like guns. This is gunfighter life. But it's called Gun Fighter Life. It's not called Gun Gadget and the Next Hot Trinket podcast, right? I don't think that this round is going to replace the 9mm. This round is not new, right? It's been around. It was first started development in 1986. It's been a thing since the 90s. It's not new. And I don't think it's going to replace the 9mm. For a long time, it was just a very small niche. and It was only FN that chambered it in their PS90 and then the FN 5.7 pistol. And there was a couple of kind of niche AR-15 uppers that chambered it, which were pretty cool. And now Ruger has come out with a pistol and a carbine. So it is becoming more widespread. It took a long time. I wish they would... I like this cartridge, I'll be honest, okay? But I wish they would have started chambering different guns for it sooner rather than later but better late than never that being said i don't think this is a replacement for a nine millimeter i think the nine millimeter is a better choice for most people for a defensive handgun i think a 223 is a better choice for most people for a go-to rifle a recce rifle whatever you want to call it their go-to like one ar i would not want that in five seven again it's its own thing in its own category what are some of the benefits of this cartridge? Well, it has very low and general felt recoil because it's such a light projectile. You get quite a bit of energy with less recoil. That's just the way that it works out with mass affecting recoil versus velocity affecting recoil. So it's not an anemic round and it doesn't give you a ton of recoil as far as pushback goes. It is going to be loud in a handgun. But that's a big advantage, less recoil. Another advantage, a real big advantage, is weight. That's one of the great things about the FN 5.7 pistol. It's super lightweight. It is very lightweight, especially when you compare, you know, comparing, you know, an unloaded 5.7 to a Glock 17, it's light. Comparing a fully loaded FN 5.7 with 20 rounds versus a Glock 17 with 17 rounds or 18 rounds. It's much, much lighter. Why? Because the heaviest part of most cartridges is the projectile at the end, right? The 9mm 115 grain, 147 grain bullet. Those add up in weight. A fully loaded Glock 17 magazine, and I'm just using Glock because it's the most common handgun, right? That's not light. That's not nothing. You could use that as a blunt instrument it's a it's a heavy thing it's a bunch of lead projectiles stacked in brass well the 57 projectiles are much much lighter so even just one loaded mag and a gun is much lighter so that whole package a fully loaded handgun and 57 in general is going to be much lighter 
than say a fully loaded similar sized nine millimeter just the way that it works out and we stumbled on something else there the capacity which is what most people flock to first but to me it's the least important you can't solve a problem with 17 rounds of 9mm or 18 rounds of 9mm. You're probably not solving it with 21 rounds of FN 5.7, let's be honest. So, but you do get more capacity. So that is an advantage, right? If you're a similar sized gun, and this is its own cartridge, so dimensions are going to be different on a 5.7 versus a Glock 17. But you're going to get more capacity, right? You're going to get standard 21 rounds. That's a lot. Stepping into, you know, STI category as far as capacity goes for 9mm guns and it's much lighter than an STI so on the FN website I looked up and it said the FN 5.7 weighs 25 point something ounces I know that my STI weighs roughly 41 42 ounces to give you an idea you get a 9mm with comparable round count that's not nothing right so again to recap for advantages we have lightweight more capacity, less felt recoil as far as inertia goes. Not necessarily sound. So less recoil, lightweight, high capacity. That's your advantages. What are some disadvantages? Cost of ammo is a big one, right? Stuff that ammo is not cheap. I've never reloaded for it, but from what I hear, it's not easy to reload it. They, at the factory, coat it with some kind of special coating to help it feed well, which is kind of outside the realm of normal reloading. I'm sure you can reload for it, but what I understand, it's not easy to reload for. The cost of ammo, right? It's unconventional. That's another con. You're probably not going to find it at Walmart or wherever. It's a pretty common store, local hardware store, right? Like you're going to find 3030 or something else. So it's less common. It's high cost. It doesn't have near the R&D that 9mm does as far as projectiles and expansion as far as like the FBI doing tests on it and there being legit protocols for how well it performs, it's not nearly as street tested as the 9mm. So you get less R&D there, which is a big deal, right? A lot of the guns we like today are good guns, the AR-15, the 9mm cartridge, because they've gone through a long process of development and improvements incrementally over time, right? Even a 9mm hollow point from the 80s, is nowhere near as good as a modern, you know, in the last couple of years, 9mm hollow point. Even though it's the same cartridge, and on paper the numbers might have the same amount of energy, it's a much better round today, right? So you don't get that amount of R&D in the 5.7 because it's nowhere near as popular. So that's a con. Also, if you're talking about it in a handgun, it's going to be loud. It was designed to be fired in a PDW like bullpup type weapon with a much longer barrel you're going to have a lot of noise coming out of a handgun and that can be a bad thing likewise if you're talking about it in a handgun you're kind of outside the realm of the norms as far as projectiles right you're shooting a 20 something grain bullet at really high velocity they might that might really appeal to you it might not i don't really know i've handled both the 5.7s and the PS90s and the Ruger pistols, but I don't have a ton of experience. Like I've shot a lot of deer. I do a lot of handgun hunting, deer and coyotes and other things with 38 Special, 357, 9 mm 40, 45. I've killed a lot of animals with those calibers. I've never killed anything with a 5.7, so I don't know how well it performs ballistically. I don't really care about numbers on a page if I can't translate that to meat in a freezer, right? So I'm not going to speak to that either way. Maybe it performs great. Maybe that 23 gram bullet at 2,800 feet a second is way ballistically more devastating than a 9 millimeter. I don't know that. I can't say that because I don't have that real world firsthand experience with it. Oh, and I guess another big advantage to this is trajectory. If you're talking about it compared to normal pistol rounds it has a much flatter trajectory if you're talking about it compared to like a 223 it does not have a flatter trajectory right but compared to most pistol rounds it will talking about that weight of ammo if you're talking about a carbine i was mostly talking about a handgun if you look at the original ps90 awesome gun way ahead of its time it still looks space age today even though it's decades old right super cool gun it has a 50 round magazine standard 
and a really cool magazine. That's part of the coolness of the cartridge in the gun is that PS90 magazine. Holds 50 rounds. Remember, it was designed to be full auto. That PS90 magazine has 50 rounds, and it's not overly heavy. Again, because these projectiles are way lighter than most other common projectiles, lighter than 223, 556, which is already known for being a lightweight round. It's much lighter than that, and it's certainly much lighter than a 9mm round. So you stack 50 on top of each other, 59 millimeter rounds is going to weigh far more in weight, and it's also going to be take up more space, which are both a big deal in some situations than a 5.7. Look at a box of 50 9 millimeter cartridges. It's just a common box of ammo. And then go pick and look at and pick up a box of 50 rounds of FN 5.7, right? They're minuscule in comparison. There are certain applications where that's a big deal. There are certain applications where that doesn't really matter, right? These are all trade-offs. That's why, I, again, I don't think that for most people it's a better go-to you know, carbine than a 223. I don't think for most people it's a better handgun round than a 9mm. But I think there are certain applications where it certainly would be better. So put on your critical thinking hats with me. Maybe you can come up with some more. Or maybe you may disagree with some that I have. What are some good uses for this round? If you want to cover a lot of ground on foot and you have to carry everything, and your main thing you're doing is not, you know, engaging Russian paratroopers, but you're trying to get from point A to point B, and you might run into some trouble. You have to carry a lot of other stuff, generally, going on long rucks, on long hikes, right? You have to carry a lot of other stuff. Maybe you don't want a lot of weight tied up in your gun and ammo. Well, you can have you know, an FN 5.7 handgun with three mags, you got 60 something rounds of ammunition. You could even throw in another box that weighs very little. You have over 100 rounds of ammunition. It's super lightweight, right? Much lighter weight than trying to carry a 9mm with 100 rounds. So that's not nothing, right? That's a unique application. So if that's going to be your one gun, and you're going to be out in the wild on a long hike or a long excursion. There may be that potential for a longer range encounter. And if you have the skill to hit stuff at distance with a handgun, this certainly will do that. So that's one application, one niche for that. Well, let's say you have a minimum amount of space and you want to pack in a bunch of ammo. Certainly 22 is kind of the king of that, right? It's kind of the ruler of that realm of carrying a lot of ammo. But it's nowhere near, again, it's nowhere near as reliable or as powerful as the 5.7. Talked about the bailout bag and the bailout bag gun. One of these would be great for that, right? For a bailout bag gun, a small satchel gun, or a laptop bag gun, right? Where you're, if you're wearing business casual and you have a laptop bag, but you want firepower in there and you don't want it to look like, you know, you're smuggling a bag full of ball bearings because it's so heavy. It's obviously not a laptop in there. Part of that laptop bag idea is being covert, right? Well, if it weighs so much that your shoulder is is hunched over, the bag sagging in the middle because it's heavy because you have a bunch of 9mm mags in there, that might be a dead giveaway, right? Laptops don't weigh that much. 5.7 in there with, let's say, four mags, that's a lot of firepower without a lot of weight. So you may decide to go that route. Also, you may be on like a trip where this is going to be the one gun that you have on you. And again, you're limited to the stuff you can carry. Maybe not in a backpacking scenario, but in like a, you're limited to a briefcase or a briefcase and a small bag for whatever reason. You're going on a group trip and you don't want to carry a giant pelican case, right? Because it's not that kind of trip. It's a missions trip or something like that. You want to have firepower, but you're limited in the amount of stuff you can take or carry. So be a good gun for that. It's again, less weight, less bulk of ammo. Both of those are important in these scenarios. Another scenario you know, maybe you're on the U.S.-Mexico border. Your main job is out riding fences. I've been a professional hunter and guide also. Part of that was running a ranch and being a rancher, right? And if you're out riding fences, your primary goal is that. But maybe you see a coyote. Or maybe, and hopefully not, you get into a run in with the Mexican drug cartel, which crosses borders all the time, right? It'd be nice to have a long gun in that scenario, but maybe you're out riding a quad and you get into an area, a wadi, where you can't take the quad, so you're on foot. Again, you're there to fix a fence. You're not there to go on patrol. 
So you, this is when you're in this wadi in the middle of nowhere. Your cell phone doesn't work. This is when you come across some maybe less than desirable interactions, let's say. 5.7 would not be a bad choice for that. Gives you a lot of firepower and light weight. You carry this on a normal belt. It's not going to be heavy. You could carry two spare magazines without a lot of weight. Probably also going to be carrying a multi-tool and some bailing wire and some other stuff, right? So as another application, I could see this coming in handy. And I'm sure there are many more that you could think of, but those are the ones that I can think of. As per the carbines, well, you heard my bio. I was a private contractor. For that kind of work, for defensive work, for protecting installations and close quarters, for protecting convoys, for things like that, I mean, obviously that is where this comes in because that's what it was designed for. Talking about an urban environment and close quarters and maybe a convoy in traffic and you get ambushed, executive protection, things like that. Yeah, these carbines are going to be great. Be better if you could have one in full auto, but if you can't, it's still not a horrible choice as long as you can shoot fast and accurately. Is it a better choice though than 556223 or 300 blackout? That's really debatable. And if it's a really long convoy, and the main purpose of the convoy is not to go fight ISIS, but you're there just in case something happens, and you only have a limited amount of space for you and your kit, the amount of ammo that you can take, maybe it starts to pull ahead there again. But you could probably think of other scenarios. But the whole point of this is step back, take a deep breath, get that there's all the hype around it, and say, what is this round? What does it do? And does what it do does what it do does what it bring to the table benefit me more than these other rounds all right now if you remember at the beginning of the podcast we talked about some guns i would like to see chamber for this i like this round i said that in the beginning i don't own this round i like the fn57 handgun i don't own one primary reason for that is the places i was a professional gunfighter did not approve this round if they had, there is a good chance I would own one. But I'm not going to spend a bunch of time training and getting used to the recoil and, and the different ergonomics of these pistols. Because they are different than a normal pistol, right? I'm not going to do all that if I can't carry it and use it to defend myself with. Continuity of training, right? So I don't own one. But you're talking basically the two handguns right now at the time of this recording. And I should say this is recorded on the 20th day of September in the year of our Lord 2022. Hopefully when you're listening to this, there's more guns out. Maybe they have a Glock 5.7. Who knows, right? That's not one of the ones I would like to see made. But right now you got your Ruger 5.7 handgun, probably some different finishes and different models or whatever, and you have your FN 5.7 handgun. I do believe the Ruger and the FN now, the latest version of theirs, is optics compatible, which is pretty cool. You also have the original gun, not for us civilians. We can't have the P90, but we can have the PS90. So there's that gun. It's still pretty lightweight, even with the ridiculously long barrel as regular civilians generally have to have. It's still a cool gun. And there's also those other companies that make the uppers that just slap onto an AR-15 lower. So there's that, right? You got those options, and you have the new kit on the block, the Ruger 5.7 carbine. And if you listen long enough, you know my rule. If it's just a range toy for fun, go ahead and get it. Have a blast. If it's something I'm going to trust my life to, I generally have the three-year rule. I don't want to be a beta tester in a gunfight. Lots of new guns by really good companies, and I like Ruger, but lots of new guns, when they come out, have issues. Again, we talked about guns being great because of that refinement process and R&D. I don't trust my life to something unproven. I don't trust my life to a gun that just came out. I've learned that the hard way, long, you know, back in the past. Don't trust your life to something unproven. And any mechanical device can fail, but a lot of new guns, right? SIG, by Glock, by whomever, right? Remington. Really good companies, right? They can have issues with new models. It's just the nature of the beast. My general rule is to stay away from something the first three years that it's out. But if it's just a toy, you're just going to have fun with it. That's a new option on the table, and it's probably a decent gun. So you got all those options. What are some guns I would like to see made? Well, I would like to see if this cartridge is going to take off and become more mainstream. I'd like to see it chambered in some different kind of guns. I would love to see it chambered in a revolver. 
I know that it does not have a rim like a 38 Special or 357 Magnum, right? But I don't see any reason, and I'm not an engineer, but I don't see any reason you couldn't chamber this in a revolver and have it headspace on the neck. It's a necked cartridge. You could have it headspace on the neck or on the rim. I don't think that would be too difficult to do. Although it wasn't designed for a varmint cartridge, it might make a really cool one. I was, I would like to see it in like a J-frame size revolver with a couple of more rounds. That would be really cool. I'd also like to see it in like a long-barreled single-action revolver, like a Ruger Blackhawk with a long barrel. That would be a super fun gun, right, for just handgun hunting of like coyotes or prairie dogs or things like that. It would be super cool a certain percentage of the gun market that has no interest in a fn57 handgun but they would in a single action you know long barreled revolver like that that would be pretty cool that would be a pretty cool medium small game hunting round you know uh mentioned coyotes and prairie dogs there's a lot in between there you got your raccoons your possums your badgers your rock chucks anything in that would be pretty cool for that handgun right i would really like to see it in a bolt action rifle like a savage or a ruger bolt action rimfire rifle again for varmints for coyotes for all kinds of things if i'm going to be walking out in the field you could probably make this on a similar size to a rimfire size rifle really lightweight really handy again the ammunition is small and light so a you know 10 round magazine or even the standard 20 round magazine you just throw it up in there you got a light handy bolt action rifle to go out not going to weigh you down you throw another box of ammo in your pack especially hunting out west it's not uncommon to come across you know a dog town a prairie dog town that is just have a good day of shooting prairie dogs that carry the plague and monkey pox and whatever else right they're rodents really cool to see a light handy not tactical carbine and i got nothing against tactical carbines right but like a nice handy bolt action rifle that you can mount on traditional scope on with traditional scope rings that'd be really cool what also would be really cool is something like the henry or the marlin lever action 22 magnum rifles right because it's not a similar cartridge but it's similar in overall length so i don't see a reason why you couldn't chamber it in a lever action gun like that now, it wouldn't be able to be tube fed, right? Because it's not rimmed. It would have to be box magazine fed, but there's plenty of box magazine fed lever action guns. That would be really cool. Again, for the same reason, a light handy carbine. Anyway, I would really like to see those kind of guns made. It seems like, and I don't know, I don't do market research or anything like that, but it seems like guns like that would do better than the next, again, Glock 17 copy, striker fire polymer pistol made by this company that's got slightly different shaped trigger like how about a lever action 5.7 carbine for hunting coyotes that's pretty cool anyway to wrap this up one more thing i will mention if you like this cartridge you want to research this cartridge you may also like to research the 4.6 cartridge which is very similar it, i believe lost the military contract to the 5.7 but it's an interesting cartridge and if you like this and you like it in the handgun concept you may also like the 7.5 burno a really cool cartridge and i believe a really well made really cool handgun but you may want to check those out also the 46 and the 75 in addition to the 57 anyway i hope you found this informative hope you found it fairly entertaining guys if you want to contact me you got questions you got gun questions you got whatever kind of questions goodshepherdtraining.com goodshepherdtraining.com your tactical tip of the day patches i know the gun community is like full of these tactical patches right the point of a patch initially is not to show your gun swag right the point of a patch is to patch up broken clothing or kit or packs or gear that's what a patch is for it's in the name it's for patching here's something that i do especially on my go-to bailout bag i have a patch one of those tactical velcro patches you can just use regular thread i use spectra which is super strong thread because i don't know what i'm going to be patching i could be patching a strap for the pack i could just be patching up a pair of pants i ripped but you take that patch and you wrap a bunch of that spectra or just thread or dental floss works really well for stitching stuff up you wrap that around the patch and you tuck the needle behind the patch then you velcro that patch onto your pack that patch is no longer just a patch with whatever brand x on it whatever cool tactical saying on it right it actually has a purpose now it has needle and thread on it 
and it's a safe way to store the needle and to wrap the thread up like a spindle so you have a way to repair your kit. That patch actually serves a function and it's a it's a patch, right? So if you do rip a hole in the knee of your pants and you're out on an excursion, out on a mission, you can take that patch and patch that hole. That's what it's there for. That's its actual purpose. Anyway, guys, with that, that's your tactical tip of the day. Now, hopefully what you've all been waiting for, the tactical verse of the day. Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. What a great prayer to pray for God Almighty to fill the purpose. Because you were put here on this earth for a reason. God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make junk, right? He's an all-perfect, all-powerful, all-knowing God. He doesn't make junk. He doesn't do anything superfluous. It has a purpose. You have a purpose. It's a good prayer to pray that God reminds you of that purpose and gives you the courage and strength to fulfill that purpose in life. With that, men, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.